Welcome to the Wandering Road Podcast, Creepy Edition. I'm your host, Chris, and today's stop on our road is one of my favorite folklore paranormal topics that comes out of Latin America, and sometimes it comes out of the Caribbean Spanish-speaking countries as well, which is the tale or the legend of La Llorona. So those of you that are not familiar with La Llorona, you might be asking yourself, what is this tale? What are you talking about? I've never heard of her before. Well, folks, I will tell you this is one of the most creepiest tales and figures in all of Latin America's paranormal stories. I even have goosebumps talking about this today. (laughs) To be really, really honest with you, I'm recording this after dark. It's super quiet. Everyone's asleep in the house, and I just have major goosebumps talking about this, but I'm going to power through for everyone. So, to get back to the topic of La Llorona. So, essentially, La Llorona is a vengeful ghost who is said to roam near bodies of water, mourning her children, whom she drowned. The tall, thin spirit is said to be blessed with natural beauty and long flowing black hair. She wears a white gown and roams the rivers and creeks, wailing into the night and searching for children to drag screaming to a watery grave. The most common lore about La Llorona includes her initially being an indigenous woman who murdered her own children. And she murdered those children that she had with a wealthy Spaniard is because the legend goes that he had abandoned her for another woman. And they say that he abandoned her for a Spanish woman from Spain that came to the New World. So there are many villainous qualities that are attributed to the character of La Llorona. And those range from infanticide, murdering of one's own blood, And this is assumed to be connected to the narrative surrounding Doña Marina. So, for those of you that don't know who Doña Marina was, she was actually a Nahua woman that served as an interpreter and advisor for the conquistador Hernán Cortés. And she was crucial for assisting Hernán Cortés and the conquistadors in forming and solidifying alliances with the other native tribes that had animosity towards the Aztecs. But to continue on with La Llorona, another story states that she had left her kids unattended to go to a party or to frequent the tavern spending the night drinking and dancing. And upon her return home, she found her kids drowned. That's one of the variations. Another variation says that one day she was walking down a road with her two sons and as they're walking down the road, this is in the middle of the day, they see a carriage, a horse-drawn carriage approaching them and seated in the carriage is her husband at the time and another woman. So essentially, the carriage stops. The man, her husband basically says, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. Um, we don't know if it's like an age related thing. Like it varies from, I guess, from country to country that tells the story. But essentially the premise goes is that he abandoned her. So out of her grief and her anger and her frustration, she leads her two kids to the river and she drowns them both. And after she did that, she was overcome with grief and shock after you know realizing what she did to her own kids that she jumps back into the river trying to get them and she drowns herself another variation of the story is that after she drowned them she would walk up and down the river banks and creeks the banks of creeks just searching for her kids she would refuse to eat and she would get thinner and thinner and she wore a white gown that she never took off. She would just keep wandering, refuse to eat, and eventually it would look she would get so skinny that she looked taller and just a skeleton of a human until she ultimately dies. 
And the legend says that after she died, she went to the gates of heaven, where she was questioned and judged of and asked, where are your children? What did you do with your children? And as a result, she was cursed to roam the earth, crying and wailing and searching for her kids. The legend goes that when her wailing sounds are near, where if you hear her crying and wailing, and it sounds that she's close to you, it means she's actually far. And when she sounds distant, it means she's actually close. Though the legends vary, the apparition is said to act without hesitation or mercy. The tales of her cruelty depend on the version of the legend that you hear. Some people say that she kills indiscriminately, so it doesn't matter if you're a man, woman, child, old person, or anything like that. If you're foolish enough to get closer to her, she'll kill you. Others say that she is barbaric and only kills children. She takes them, dragging them screaming to a watery grave. She, she takes the children, takes them to the nearest body of water, and drowns them. Now, unfortunately, I don't know anyone that had any interactions. Pardon. Not interactions, but any experiences with La Llorona. But thankfully, Reddit exists. And I was able to do a little bit of digging. And I found this one story that you all will enjoy. I know I enjoyed reading it. So I hope you all enjoy me relaying this story to you. So the story takes place in Mexico, located in Zacatecas. My mom is from a small town in Mexico, located in Zacatecas. When she was around 14, she had the habit of waking her mom up to go to the restroom since it was an older home and the restroom was located outside. My mom tells me that it was around 3 a.m. when she woke up and felt the need to use the restroom urgently. So she began calling out to her mom. After a while, her mom not responding, she began getting agitated and started screaming. At this point, my mom turns around and at the foot of her bed, she sees her mom standing there. She was wearing a white robe, but had a very bleak expression on her face and both of her arms were extended. My mom said she suddenly felt extremely cold and a huge sense of dread fell upon her. She had never seen her mom wear a white robe before and that's when she looked down and saw her mom's feet weren't touching the floor. At that moment she screamed and quickly threw the covers over her head. Her mom wearing something completely different runs in to find my mom shaking in her bed. Nobody believed my mom. Everyone told her it was a dream. Until a few days later, there was a power outage. During this, my mom and few of her siblings with her parents all decided to sleep in the living room. At around the same time at 3 a.m., they heard the same undeniable wails of La Llorona down their street. I don't know about you all, but that one creeped me out a little bit. But I have another story to share with you today. My mother's family is Hispanic, and we have wonderful family reunions every summer. One of these times, my cousins made a lovely trivia game that had several questions about my grandmother and her siblings. It was all very fun, and I was enjoying learning things about my great aunts and uncles, but one of the questions struck me as odd. When she was young, she had a pet chicken that would speak to her. I thought this was a little strange. But the game went on. My mother happened to be the one to answer that question, so I asked her about it later in the day. I asked about the chicken, and my mother told me that my great aunt did indeed have a chicken that she would speak to, and it would speak to her. I laughed a bit about it, but I could tell my mom was serious. My grandmother was sitting nearby and chimed in. She told me that my great aunt had always been very sensitive to certain things. My grandmother never doubted that my aunt was talking to the chicken, but she was unsure of who was talking to my aunt. At this point, I was very intrigued and had a small case of the heebie-jeebies. 
Then my grandmother told me a story that made my blood run cold in the middle of an outdoor July picnic. She asked me if I knew the legend of La Llorona. It was unfamiliar to me, so a tale was told. There is a legend of a weeping woman called La Llorona. The legend tells of a beautiful woman named Maria, who married the most handsome man and had his children. Her husband lost interest in Maria and would only visit to see his children. One day, in a jealous rage, Maria pushed her children into the river where they would be swept away and drowned. Regretting her action, she dove in after them to only drown herself. Maria wandered the earth after death in search of her children. This legend was often used as a cautionary tale to warn children not to stay out at night or to play near water alone. And if they did, La Llorona would take them away. I loved the tale, but wasn't quite sure what it had to do with the chicken. My grandmother stated that sometimes when you attract spirits, you are born with the ability per to perceive them. I was perplexed, but she went on with the story. She said that when they were children, they lived near water. My aunt who spoke to the chicken was only an infant. My great grandmother had laid my aunt in her crib, which happened to be a near a window that faced the water. After a little while, my aunt began to cry. My great grandmother walked into the nursery and froze. A black figure was reaching through the window and reaching for my aunt. My great grandmother, a devout Catholic, began invoking the name of Christ. The figure recoiled from my aunt and out of the window. My great grandmother watched the entity walk along the wall and recede into the water. La Llorona had tried to take my aunt. What's a little funny about that tale? What the author recounted of La Llorona being used as a scare tactic for children. My mother used to use La Llorona to scare me as a child when I didn't want to go to bed. Thanks, Mom. And now, I have one final story. I was nine at the time when I escaped her. I am now 19 going on 20 this summer. So it's a wonder how I managed to escape one of Mexico's scariest ghosts. Well, let's begin. It was a nice summer evening, and I was helping my abuela with dinner. My whole family had come down for a big family get-together for my papi's birthday. Marky, dear, can you go get your cousins, please? Supper is almost ready, my abuela asked me. Of course, abuela. I'll be right back, I told her. I walked out of the house and down the hill. My abuela's house had a river next to it for a sign of a bad omen. Guys, abuela wants you back inside for supper, I told my younger cousins. But of course, one of them had to be stubborn. That was my cousin Lola. Oh, Marky, come on. Abuela can wait a few minutes. It's so nice out today, and we want to play in the water, Lola said. She was only a year younger than me, and she sure was an ass. No, Lola. You know Abuela hates when we play in the river. She doesn't want us to be taken by La Llorona, I told her. That stupid ghost tale. Ah, don't make me laugh. Our parents only used that old tale to scare us kids into behaving, Lola said. All of the other kids decided to head back up the hill as I was known to get very angry when it came to Lola. Lola, please just come inside, I asked her one more time. But I was too late as Lola was already in the water. Lola, what the hell, I screamed. Oh, come on, Marky. You scared of a little water? She asked, teasing me. At this point, I had enough. I threw off my shoes, rolled up my pants, and went in after her. Marky, Lola, where are you two? Abuela was calling out for us. Finally got to Lola after a few minutes of swimming and grabbed her by the arm. See, you made Abuela worry about us. Get to shore now, I told her. At that point, I've had it with her. Ugh, fine, party pooper, she said as she swam to shore. I was right behind her when I felt something pull on my leg. Haha, ha, Lola, nice try. The whole fake pulling my leg, leg gag is getting old, I told her. What do you mean? My hands are right here, she said as she showed me her hands. I then got a chill up my back as I felt a cold hand on my leg. 
I slowly turned around to see who it was. Shit, Marky, run, Lola said. It was La Llorona. I tried to run, but she had my leg. I was scared. More scared than at the time when I was at the hospital. Lola get help, I screamed right before I was pulled under the water. I was trying my hardest to fight her off, but she was so strong. I couldn't hold on any longer. I started to think about what was going to happen. Am I going to die? This is it. Goodbye, world. Mom, Dad, I'm sorry, Abuela. Please forgive me. I was losing breath as water filled my lungs, but then I felt someone grab me by the collar of my shirt, and they pulled me above water. I got him, screamed someone. I couldn't see who it was as I ended up passing out. All I remember was someone yelling about calling emergency services. I woke up in a hospital room surrounded with doctors and nurses. Ah, Marky, I see you're up. Now can you tell me what happened, the doctor asked me. I stopped and stared at him. I started to shake and tears started to stream down my face. Hey, it's okay. You're safe now, he told me while rubbing my back. I jumped at his action and screamed at the top of my lungs. Right then and there, my dad came rushing in to hold me. Marky, we were so worried about you. Buddy, please calm down, my dad said to me. As he screamed in my ear and hugged me, my abuela came in after and told the doctors to get out. Once the doctors were gone, she sat down next to my bed and held my hand. Marky, sweetie, I know you were trying to do the right thing by saving Lola, but you almost got yourself killed in the process. What were you thinking, she asked me. I looked at her and told her what was going through my mind when it happened. I, I'm so sorry, abuela. I should have listened and gotten an adult to get Lola out. I'm really sorry, as I was crying. Abuela pulled me into a hug and said this, Marky, it isn't your fault. Lola should have known better than to go into the water. I will need to have a talk with her afterwards. Now you get some rest and try to calm down, she said as she took my dad and went out of the room. I sat there alone with my thoughts, and then a knock on the door. Come in, I said, my voice almost gone from crying. Hola, little man, my uncle said as he walked in. I sadly don't remember the conversation I had with him, but he is the one who saved my life. But now I have a very big fear of open bodies of water. And I also have a scar from the encounter. I wonder, though, if Lola didn't get me help, would I still be alive today? Or would the Yorona have taken me to my watery grave? But what's creepy about all of this is that La Llorona isn't a fairy tale. It's not a campfire story or a mythical creature born out of our imagination. For those of you that believe the story, she was just a person who committed the ultimate sin. She killed her own children in a fit of rage to get back at someone. Now, if you think about that for a second, we've all had points in our lives where we've been so upset that we were on the verge or have done something that we immediately regret. And that's exactly what La Llorona or Maria did. And now she pays the ultimate price. She is forced to roam the earth forever, searching for her children. And when you hear her cry, Ay, mis hijos, that's her. And given that so many people have shared similar stories of La Llorona, is this something that could possibly be real? Or is there a scientific explanation for all of it? The next time you find yourself alone at night and you hear the sounds of a weeping woman, it might not just be your mind playing tricks on you. So lock your doors, shut your windows, because La Llorona might be paying you a visit. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of The Wandering Road. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe and share with your friends. I hope you have a great day, and I look forward to you joining me for the next one.